So now once we've defined our cover classes for our community, and we've also defined our project boundaries, and in this case here, we're looking at Worcester, Massachusetts. You can see the municipal boundaries of the city have been defined. I can zoom in a little closer and you can get a, a, a good view of that. The red line here indicating the edges of the, uh, the municipal bound. So once that's complete and we're ready to begin our project, and we've already clearly defined our canopy cover classes, and in this case here, we have trees, um, ground cover, we have a shrub layer, as well as impervious materials, and water. And you can see there's no data in here, but each one of those have uh, are ready to accept data from our survey. So the first step will be going over here onto our ID number. We're going to just click New Point, and we're going to add a point. And what the uh, Google Maps will do is actually go and find a point location on our map, a randomly selected spot within the defined project area. And in this case here, we're looking at the backyard of, or a yard, uh, and it looks like a lawn area. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our cover class, and in this case here, we're going to call it ground cover. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll just simply hit next, and we go to our next point. And in this case here, if you look at it, you'll see it's in the uh, side yard of a property here. And we're going to also, again, report that in his ground cover. And then we'll go and we'll just simply repeat the process. And these randomly generated plots will uh, appear throughout our study area. And as we go through, we can uh, look and see. Now this one here clearly finds, and if you look closer, we can see and if we zoom in a little, we'll see that it actually uh, is on a tree. So we're going to leave that as our tree. And we'll go to the next point. And you keep repeating this process over and over. In this case here, it's the rooftop. We're going to call that impervious area. Again, repeat. This point here, it's in a street. Impervious area. We go and define our point And continue along. This one here looks like it's a, a, a small tree in a yard. We're going to report that in as a tree and we'll keep moving along. This one clearly shows trees and click to the next point. As we go through this process you're going to see these points up top here um, change based on you'll see our report by area, our percent cover and you can also report by the uh, square mile of the reported area. But we don't have, we only have eight points so far done. We're going to continue this process until we find um, a representative sample of the whole community. In many cases, we're looking between 700 and 1,200 points. In this case here, we're looking at the edge of a tree um, within a, what looks, appears to me as a cemetery. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pick that as a uh, tree, move to our next point here. And so we repeat the process. This is the rooftop of a building. Again, we're going to call that impervious area and move on. As we go through this process, here we have a, a gravel pit. Again, we'll call that impervious and move to the next point. And you'll see these are trees. Okay. So the main thing is you also want to save your data as you go through this process. And in this case here, uh, we click down the bottom where it has the point for saving our data. In this case here, we'll put in Worcester and uh, .dat, which is the default. We don't have to put that extension, but it automatically would do that. And then we go ahead and save it. It saves it to our downloads folder on our computer where we have that data to be archived uh, and saved. So that basically goes through the whole process here of inputting your data. And uh, our next video will show you a little bit on um, saving your data, reporting out your data, and as well as archiving uh, some of those components.